Mr. Superintendent, uh, welcome to all of you, all of you families and honored students who join us tonight as we honor an impressive list of choir, band, and orchestra members who have performed in honor, conference, or state level competitions. At this time, I welcome to the podium White Bear Lake Area High School South Campus Principal Don Bosch to read the names of our honored students. Mr. Bosch. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Typically, we have a much larger um, group that we uh, honor. Um, they're smaller this evening, so typically we'll wait and have everybody applaud at the end. But since we have a smaller group, feel free to applaud after each student comes up. We'll start with band and orchestra students first. Congratulations to the following band and orchestra students who, present, who represented the district well at a variety of higher level competitions and performances. Um, first, Zachary Beauclair, who was alternate for Allstate Band. He is not here this evening. Um, Jack Brash, Augsburg Honor Band. <laughs> Amanda Brown was Augsburg Honor Band. She is not here this evening. Um, Sabrina Bush, um, SEC Band. She is not here this evening. Zachary Duncanson, SEC Orchestra is not here this evening. Um, Jenny Golding, SEC Band is not here this evening. Um, Justin Haig, Augsburg Honor Band. Mitchell Hansen, SEC Orchestra and All-State Band. <laughs> Cody Hudson was SEC Band, he is not here this evening. Um, Abigail Christensen was All-State Band, she is not here this evening. Um, Lily Lavalley, SEC Band. Anna Lee was SEC Band, she is not here this evening. Catherine Miller, SEC Band and All-State Band. <laughs> Tejas Naverti is not here this evening, SEC Orchestra and All-State Band for Tejas. Uh, Anna Perrin is not here, Augsburg Honor Band. Um, Isabel Perrin was also Augsburg Honor Band, is not here this evening. Mackenzie Petty was Augsburg Honor Band. And the rest of our um, band and orchestra are not here this evening, but I'll read their names. Catherine Rush was SEC Orchestra. Christina Ryberg was Augsburg Honor Band. Um, Isabel Sisterman was Augsburg Honor Band. Raymond White was SEC Band and All-State Band. Jeremy Rockford, um, one of our North Campus Band Directors, and Shannon Anderson, our South Campus Band Director. Congratulations to all of those. I'm going to ask the group of students who are here to come back and have your picture taken with our board members. Also at this time, parents in the audience, please stand and be recognized as well too. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll now re recognize our choir students. Congratulations to the following choir students who represented the district well at a variety of higher level competitions and performances. Um, Grace Zanwu, um, SEC Choir, I don't believe she's here this evening. Anna Barton, NCACDA Honor Choir. Um, Jack Barron's NCACDA Honor Choir, um, Joe Dennis, All-State Choir, Noah Ellenberg, SEC Choir, Lucas Fahey, NCACDA Honor Choir, <laughs> Ryan
Ryan Hall Hunt, SEC Choir. Claudia Johnson, ACDA, Minnesota 9th and 10th grade honor choir. Um, Ryan Kroll, uh, NCA, CDA, honor choir. Yehida Lansaquat, all state choir alternate and SEC choir. Isaac Letourneau, all state choir and SEC choir. And NCA CDA Honor Choir. Sorry, I missed that. Um, Peter McBride, SEC Choir. <laughs> William Muneer, um, NCA CDA Honor Choir. William Novak, SEC Choir. Danielle Olson, ACDA Minnesota 9th and 10th grade Honor Choir. Cameron Pierce, SEC Choir. <laughs> Thomas Pereira, SEC Choir. Um, Bryn Polkamp, SEC Choir. Alec Rottenberg, NCA CDA Honor Choir. <laughs> Brenna Ryland, NCA CDA Honor Choir. Tiffany Richard, SEC Choir. <laughs> Noelle Summers, NCA CDA Honor Choir. Julia Tamala, ACDA Minnesota 9th and 10th grade Honor Choir. <laughs> Paula Vasquez, Allstate Choir and SEC Choir. Abigail uh, White, NCA CDA Honor Choir. <laughs> and our choir directors from both North and South Campus. From South Campus is Marie Dimmitt, she's not here this evening. And from our North Campus, Wendy Suya. All right, students, if I can have you back to have your picture taken with the board. Parents in the audience at this time, please stand to be recognized as well. Thank you all for attending tonight. There are cookies left. Please grab one if you didn't already do so. And if you already did, grab another. Um, the regular board meeting will be starting at 7 o'clock, so you're welcome to stay for that. Uh, between now and then, uh, the board members will be available to, to visit if you uh, would wish to do so. So again, thank you for being here. Congratulations, students.
to call this meeting of Independent School District 624 to order. With the clerk, please call the roll. Chapman? Here. Ellison? Here. Fahey here. Mullen? Here. Newmaster? Here. Wilson? Here. Beloyd? Here. Would you all please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before us, we have a, an agenda. Uh, would I, do I have a motion to accept the agenda? So moved. A motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second, second by Ms. Beloy. Uh, new oh, master. Excuse me, new master. Apologize. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We have an agenda. Also before us, we have a consent agenda. And in this agenda, there are several items that are standard items uh, within the school board. But one thing that we are very thankful for is the generosity of the community and, and the district as a whole. So there are several large donations, uh, $1,000 scholarships, uh, a lot, several of them, several $100 scholarships. Um, we want to thank everybody for their generosity. With that, can we have a motion for the consent agenda? So, There's a motion by Ms. Beloy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Fahey. I think she got you by a nose. Uh, for this, we would require a roll call vote. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloy? Aye. The motion passes. This is the portion of the board agenda where it's public forum. Uh, typically, we ask uh, anybody if we tell ask anybody if they'd like to speak that they fill out a white card up there on the table. I do not see any in front of me. Is there anybody that'd like to address the board? Okay. On to the first informational item is Dr. Kazmierczak is the superintendent's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Before tonight's meeting, we recognized high school honor and all state band, orchestra, and choir students. Our 30 member strategic planning team will get together on February 26th and 27th to discuss the work of our eight action teams and make the final recommendations that will go to the school board for discussion at the work, uh, March work study meeting and board action in April. Thank you to over 200 district staff members, parents, and community members who have been involved in this important work. We've had many important celebrations and recognitions during the month of February, and we have a couple more in the coming weeks as well. February is Black History Month. The week of February 5th through the 9th was National School Counseling Week. February 17th is National PTA Founders Day. And February 19th through the 23rd is Minnesota School Board Recognition Week. And in honor of the week, we hope you all enjoy a special Bear She's Bar. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> You can help me out here. Highly uh, okay, uh, and appreciate uh, Bearshi Bar in appreciation of your efforts on behalf of our students and families. So, what makes up a Bearshi's Bar? You might be asking yourself. Coincidentally, the ingredients are reflective of the characteristics of our board members. Ingredients: thoughtful, accountable, open, representative voice, good-willed, conscientious, fiscally responsible, supportive, and proud. Thank you for all of your service and enjoy your bear sheet bear uh, bar. <laughs> That's for McKenna. Can you deliver that? Yeah. Okay. All right, Willow Lane Elementary fifth graders are taking over Donatelli's during the lunch hour each Tuesday through February 27th. Stop in for a terrific meal and great service. Mm -hmm. See a listing of the variety of springtime theater productions to be performed by district students at the elementary, middle school, and high school levels as a news item on the district website at www.isd624.org. Right now we have a um, little bit of a different uh, portion of my report. Um, we have um, Patriot Pen honorees. So tonight we have with us students who are honored in the Patriot Pen program. We welcome to the podium um, Sunrise Park Middle School student Meg Elliott. And let's see who else is here. 
Um, so we have Meg Elliott and Central Middle School students Lena Viker, Marta McKean, um, and then Michael uh, Kimling are also from Central. So it looks like, Meg, you are representing tonight. <laughs> so we have four students who are honored. Um, and again, so thank you, and thank you for being here, and thank you to all staff, the staff members who've helped to facilitate this program in our schools. So the Patriots Pen is a competition conducted nationwide and is sponsored by the VFW as it provides students with an opportunity to write essays expressing their thoughts on a chosen patriotic theme. This year, the theme was America's Gift to My Generation. So Meg, I, I, here, here you are. I, we talked beforehand, and you are um, willing to share your essay with the school board. So welcome, Meg. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me here. It's an honor to present my speech. Um, America's Gift to My Generation. Imagine being unable to listen to the radio, go to work or school, or leave your house without a male relative. Imagine being married off at the age of 12 to a stranger that owns you like property. You can't be seen in public without a thick burqa or hijab covering all of your skin, even if you're with a relative. You could be whipped if your ankles are exposed. You can't laugh loudly, wear brightly colored clothes, or play sports. Unfortunately, this is the life most girls and women live in Afghanistan, controlled by a group called the Taliban. They have none of the basic rights we Americans have, and if they don't follow the Taliban's rules, they will be shot and killed. It's horrible and wrong, and that's why America's gift to my generation is our freedom. We can speak freely, have equal education, and believe in any religion we choose. Without freedom, we would be helpless zombies controlled by our government. We would be killed if we said the wrong thing, acted the wrong way, or even believed in the wrong religion. Most people don't realize how important the Bill of Rights really is. They think it's a dusty old um, document that doesn't affect life today. Just another thing to study. But they couldn't be more wrong. The amendments are the only thing saving us from another dictator or king. Other countries aren't that lucky. Wars have been fought, governments have been overthrown, and millions of people have died for the rights we take for granted. Of course, America hasn't been perfect. We ourselves used to allow segregation and even slavery despite the Constitution. But because of the First Amendment, someone had always taken a chance and spoken up. Freedom of speech is an amazing thing, and it allows us to take a stand for whatever we believe in. <coughs> even though heroes like Rosa Parks and Frederick Douglass knew they could be murdered for their decisions, they made them anyway. How could America say it had freedom of speech when its citizens couldn't stand up for equality? Without their bravery and willingness to speak out, they wouldn't have been heroes, but the First Amendment gave them a boost to their goals. Whatever people say, our freedom is important. Without it, America would be very different today. Right, thank you, Meg. Thank you just for a second. So on behalf of the, um, of the school board, I have a, a certificate for you and a coveted bear pin, so I'll, I'll <laughs> Let's all stand. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's just okay. all come right there. Yeah, we'll come around. All right, at this point, I would uh, welcome our four teacher guests that we have in the audience tonight as we recognize White Bear teachers who recently achieved National Board Certification. This is a voluntary advanced teaching credential that goes beyond state licensure and is a way for teachers to deepen their instructional practice and develop leadership in their field. Teachers use written commentary, student work evidence, and video to demonstrate clear, consistent, and concise evidence of reaching accomplished 
teaching standards set by the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. There are three classroom-based performance assessments in addition to an in-depth assessment of content knowledge performed at a testing center. Teachers complete these assessments in three to four years while being supported by the White Bear Lake Area Schools National Board Cohort. Our district cohort works to provide professional development to support these candidates. Only 460 Minnesota teachers are National Board certified. In Minnesota this year, 19 teachers earned certification, and four of them are our teachers, representing 21% of the statewide group. Pretty impressive. Our four newly certified teachers joined these four White Bear teachers who previously achieved certification, Abby Case, Deb Schmidt, Allison Thiessen, and Marilee Walters. So first, congratulations to Steve Bates. Steve is a first grade teacher at Hugo Elementary. He's certified in the area of early childhood generalist. Next, congratulations to Rita Leonard. Rita is a health educator at South Campus High School. She's certified in health education at the early adolescence through young adulthood level. Third, congratulations to Keith Stedland. Keith is a science teacher at North Campus High School. He's certified in the area of science at the early adolescence level. And last but not least, congratulations to Deb Thibault. Deb is a literacy coach at Hugo and Onika Elementary Schools. She's certified in the area of literacy, reading, language arts at the early and middle childhood level. So if any of you are interested in um, offering a quick reflection on your experience, you're welcome to do that. No pressure. Um, I'm sure you came prepared to do that. But if you, OK, sure, OK, great, thanks. Board certification was um, a wonderful, challenging journey that we took together. Uh, we made great friends and made great strides. and. Um, it's the gold standard for teacher development, so we know it'll pay dividends for our students for years to come. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, the district for providing our cohort opportunities where we get together and work three times a year um, to help develop our components. And um, it shows uh, we led the state this year. We were the only district to have four teachers achieve it this year. Uh, so we need to keep the momentum going. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, I, I knew Rita would <laughs> have the opportunity. I just want to thank the district for the financial support too. Half of our um, fees were paid for by the district and helped make it um, very possible to achieve our goals. So thank you. Okay, are we good? All right, now, on behalf of the school board, I am honored to present you with a certificate and a coveted bear pin. <laughs> Let's uh, take a picture too. So with that, I will hand it off to Ashley for a student report. Thank you, Dr. Kazmierczak. To start off the student report tonight, I'd like to highlight a sophomore at North Campus. Bailey Hamilton celebrated her 16th birthday by hosting a blood drive and donating blood for the very first time. Her blood drive is fulfilling a requirement for a service project for ambassadors. This is something she's wanted to do for a while, and we applaud her for spending her birthday helping to save lives. 
The drum rang recently played two times during the Super Bowl live events at Nicollet Mall preceding the big game. When talking to the drumline members, they said it was a fantastic, once-in-a-lifetime experience. However, the highlight for them was making it on Jimmy Fallon's Snapchat story twice. Mm -hmm. Student Council hosted their annual winter dance on Saturday, February 3rd at the Armory in downtown White Bear. This was the first time the dance has been hosted off-site and was declared a success. Students had a great time getting dressed up and dancing the night away. This upcoming Saturday, there will be a night of jazz hosted at South Campus. Come to listen to the high school jazz ensembles, the alumni jazz band, and a special guest while dining on food catered by Donatelli's. Tickets are available online for the dinner and dance for $25 per adult and $20 per seniors, or at the door for only the dance for $15. On February 27th, a small contingent of South Campus students will be going down to the Target Center to participate in the Fusion Advancing Sciences event. During the day, the students will attend breakout sessions run by doctors, engineers, and professors. White Bear was selected as one of 15 schools across Minnesota to participate in the opening <coughs> evening event where students will be creating a presentation about how White Bear Lake is embracing STEM. They will be giving this presentation to over 250 industry professionals, and we will have a shot at winning over $10,000 for our programs. Both the Nordic and Alpine skiing teams competed in sections this past week and performed very well. The Alpine team will be competing in state this Wednesday at Giants Ridge, and there are a handful of individuals who, be, who will be completing the state Nordic meet. We wish them the best of luck as they represent White Bear Lake. Go Bears! Thank you very much, Ashley, and I want to say congratulations to the students and the teachers uh, for their hard work. Uh, we really much appreciate it. So with that, we will get into our first discussion item, um, D1, which is the American Indian Resolution on Concurrence. Dr. Kazmierczak? I'd like to welcome Kathleen. I'd like to welcome Kathleen Daniels to the podium to introduce our guest this evening. Chair Mullen, members of the board, Dr. Kazmierczak, I'd like to introduce Andrew Adams III tonight. He's a chairperson of our American Indian Parent Advisory Council, and he's going to offer information tonight on the resolution of concurrence, which is something we do annually, and it was discussed at the January 29th Parent Advisory Council meeting. Here's Andrew. Welcome, Mr. Adams. Uh, Thank you um, for the time to address the school board. Uh, my name is Andrew Adams. I've got three um, children in the district, um, a 15-year-old daughter who's a freshman at um, North Campus, a 12-year-old son who is a sixth grader at Sunrise, and uh, my little mad scientist who is in fourth grade at Vadness Heights uh, Elementary. And I have the, the honor of um, representing and serving on the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee for the district um, as its chairperson. And, um, and, and some of you may be wondering, you know, what the purpose of the committee is um, and what it does. Under state law, um, any school district in this, the state of Minnesota that's got more than 10 American Indian students is required to have an American Indian Parent Advisory Committee. And so I believe the district um, a couple years ago realized that it needed this and kind of put the word out to interested parents to see who might be willing to serve. Uh, my wife and I and a number of other parents um, with students in the district stood up and, and formed um, the advisory committee and the district also uh, hired an, an American Indian cultural coordinator um, by the name of Michael Hearth who um, is great you know Mike has been um, a great asset to the to the district and to the students and um, and comes with a lot of experience uh, that he's brought um, from different districts and even um, tribal communities that he's worked with um, from an American Indian educational standpoint. And so every year, the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee has to take what's called either a vote of concurrence or a vote of non-concurrence. And essentially what that comes down to is it's the, the parents given the voice under state law to 
either approve or disapprove of the efforts that a district may be taking um, to educate its, um, its young folks, its, its young American Indian um, students. And I am uh, happy to report that the committee voted um, for concurrence, that it is in favor of the steps that the district has been taking. And so that vote took place at the last uh, parent advisory committee meeting that occurred on Monday, January 29th. Um, and so with that, um, if any of you have any questions about the committee or that, that resolution, um, I'd be happy to answer um, those, um, but wanted to make it here tonight to just express that that vote and to um, make myself available if anybody had any questions. So I know we have an action item a little bit later on in the agenda, but uh, we can open it up to questions at this point if there's any. All right. Ms. Just, just a comment. Thank you, Andrew, for your work on that committee. It's I'm the board liaison, and it's one of my favorite committees to attend because the whole family comes to the meeting. It really is a, a, um, a wonderful group of very committed parents on that committee, and it's a delight to be the board liaison. Yeah, and we greatly appreciate your time and presence at the meetings, Ellen. That's why I missed the 29th when we had a work study. Yeah. So, but thank you for all your work. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Adams, thank you very much for your work, and uh, we'll bring up this action item a little bit later in the agenda. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. That will turn to D2, which is the proposed school year calendar 2018-2019. Dr. Kasbercheck. And Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'd like to welcome Sarah Paul, our Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning, and Mitch Cooper, Director of Human Resources, to, um, to cover this agenda item. Um, we had discussion of this at the work study meeting and there were some other subsequent conversations among staff and Sarah and Mitch are here to, to present where we're at at this point. So welcome. All right. Thank you, Chair Mullen, Dr. Kazmichek, members of the board. I'm just going to go over some brief um, talking points to kind of introduce uh, where we've been and where we're at right now as we bring this proposed calendar to you and then both Mr. Cooper and I will be available to answer any questions that you have. Um, so really the primary purpose of um, our discussion tonight is to look at the 2018-19 school calendar and there's many people that I want to make sure to take the time to thank because there was a lot of time and effort put into the proposed calendar we're bringing to you today. First of all, um, Ms. Ashley Renstead and Ms. McKenna Pratt are two of our stu um, the two student liaisons to the board, and they engage several student groups in discussion to really look at an innovative um, student learning day that we were looking at. Um, you'll see that that's not part of the um, proposed calendar we have tonight. It wasn't quite, we weren't quite ready yet um, to implement that, but I think um, we learned a lot in terms of what we may be able to do in the future. So it wasn't time lost. That's what a learning organization does we explore new ideas and we determine whether or not we're ready to implement those but um, really hats off to them for the student voice and choice um, that they brought into that discussion so that we could continue to bring that into our thinking across um, the organization second um, we wanted to make sure to thank our world's best workforce advisory committee members we did have a chance to have a conversation with um, those people that represent different stakeholder groups across the district um, and their voice was really important in the um, proposed calendar we're bringing to you. And then we have a district calendar committee, and it's comprised of administrators, um, teachers, um, Mr. Cooper, and um, Dr. McKenzie, our union president, are key in that group that really advises calendar decisions. And so with that, um, we really try to really think about the student experience and use the calendar as a critical element of, uh, the, st of the student experience. And um, we're trying to coordinate inputs, which is the importance of staff development time, the importance of time to collaborate with professional colleagues to improve instruction, and then um, conferencing time and that time to connect with parents and um, one of the things you'll see is that we've kept intact um, the elementary welcome back conferences in the same manner in which we have delivered on those this past year um, we've um, had a chance to connect with you as a board at two work study meetings and the decision to 
continue with the model as we have it. It was informed by a survey that we did with our parents. Um, and so with that, you really aren't going to see a whole lot of change from this year um, going into next year's proposed calendar in terms of um, a lot of the things that we've done in the past are going to be the same. I will tell you that there is in the calendar one day in which there's going to be students that um, there's going to be professional development for K-5 mm -hmm. um, teachers, which means that students will have off. But on that day, our 6 through 12 students will have school. And um, we've really thought ahead to how we're going to work with community ed to make sure that parents that want to have an opportunity for extended day um, and activities for their children, those will be available to them. Um, but we've landed on that being the best um, way to really incorporate the needs of our students and accommodate for the unique differences that there are at the elementary level and the secondary level and maximize learning time. So with that, do you have any questions for us? I do. Um, so I'm seeing that. So actually, let me back up. Excuse me, Ms. Paul. Dr. Kashmir, check. So there is, I don't see an action item on the calendar for this evening. Correct. We're not acting on it this evening. So this is um, a first reading of it. It'll come back to you in March for action. Okay. Yep. So on the 26th, when you have the, the professional development day, um, are we communicating that if as long as this comes back next month but uh, is the plan to get that out uh, as soon as possible to families so that they can act accordingly on the day for child care or anything of that nature yes and communications would be at the district level the school level and then also making sure that people are aware of opportunities if they want to um, tap into op um, uh, different activities we'd have through community education May I add one thing, Sarah? The, um, one of the things we did last year leading up to the Welcome Back Conference the day after Labor Day, we, we communicated that um, starting probably about this time a year ago and uh, really over-communicated. And I think that's in part what led to the successful rollout of that new idea. So um, Marissa, Betty, has, um, we've already been working on a communications plan with the calendar. So, um, so that is something we would, we would make sure we would get word out quickly on that. Any other, Ms. Fahey? Just had a quick question. So the, the welcome back conferences, there's still one day during workshop week and then one day at the beginning of the school year. Mm -hmm. Is there any consideration ever for the first two days of the school year being welcome back so the elementary teachers have their workshop week to prepare? We, we did actually consider that. We did take into consideration some of the feedback we got from parents. Mm -hmm. um, and staff. One of the things staff did appreciate about the way that it was laid out now was that it breaks it up so there aren't two really long days and then you have mm -hmm. your first day of school. Um, the other piece is that one of the things we do really well is we have a unique kindergarten experience that is their own first day of school. And if we were to move the two welcome back conferences to be mm -hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday, all students would be starting on the same day as kindergartners. And we weren't quite ready to change that experience that our families and teachers have come to appreciate specifically for kindergartners. So it may be something that is going to work for us in the future, but um, but right now we didn't feel that was the best move for us. Okay, thank you. Ms. Newmaster. I guess as someone who lived by the calendar for 40 plus years, I read it very carefully. And I was glad that the flex day was postponed at least for a bit mm -hmm. so that it could be thought through more mm -hmm. carefully. Um, one question I had was from somebody who worked by the calendar, it's really hard to tell, as at least as a teacher, when you look at this calendar, things like uh, prep mm -hmm. and hours mm -hmm. and any comp time. So is there going to be some sort of a detailed calendar when this comes to its final thing so we can look at? Actually, I mean, that's worked out, I'm assuming, already. It's yeah. just not on this general kind of pretty calendar that's out there for everybody. Yeah. But those are things that within the dis district in buildings are hard to, hard to understand ahead. And I think teachers need to know mm -hmm. and plan. 
I, I appreciate the comment and it is a point of improvement for us. I think we put a lot of time into developing the detailed calendar and to make sure that we also have a communication plan to staff so that they also have that clarity about what the day's purpose is and how that's going to be used. Um, that is a point of improvement for us that we're planning to do a better job of this year. Thank you. It looks good, but I think there's that that added little le picky level yes. for the people, mm -hmm. and and that would be appreciated by a board member to take a look at too. Sure. Okay. And let's see. I had. I'm just assuming that the. I can't hardly think that far ahead. 1920. Yes. Is just <laughs> kind of a fuzzy mm -hmm. look at the future. There's so the actual details of it aren't fleshed in at all with this calendar. Uh, we do have start and end times, and we tried to identify major breaks. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things you'll note that we did, um, we do have a placeholder that December will be when we bring you the proposed calendar for the 1920 school year, um, just to make sure that we're also getting advance notice out to families that have to plan ahead for vacations. Um, one of the limitations of our process is um, there's a contract negotiation process that happens that then informs calendar decisions. And so we're going to be in a good position next year to to have that conversation in December so that we can get word out for 1920 sooner. So we're um, we're excited to make sure that we're bumping that process um, up in the in the year so that families can plan ahead. The two things that I noticed on there that are probably the most immediately looked at by families are the November. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. travel plans have to change or is it just not adjusted for that yet well with we, conferences and things like that we Thanks. don't have any of the conferences in this um, framework of a calendar it's more to identify the start and end dates um, okay it, and in this particular case it's important because the calendar has some awkward dates on here and so you may notice that um, after the first of the year there's a two-day week and um, and we want to really leverage high learning days that happen like in the earlier part of the year and if we put those breaks um, in there that extended breaks we would be moving into the second week of June and so that's one of the things that kind of signals to people like oh so we would we wouldn't be going into that next week in June and there would be a two-day week there those are the things that I think on a high level are helpful to families um, we just try to really be thoughtful about um, the strategic planning process that we're engaged in right now and that may impact some of those conferencing decisions and things that we do and so we don't want to put too much information that then would change but just to be able to give um, some of those important um, high-level decisions so that it can help families in their planning any other missiles I just have a minor edit um, on um, Memorial Day is listed as May 28th okay. in the list of dates, but on the calendar it's May 27th. Oh, thank you. So, thank you very much. Appreciate that. We'll, we'll correct that. Any other questions, comments regarding the calendar? Okay. So we'll, this will be the first reading, and we'll bring it back uh, next month for a vote. Great, and since I did most of the talking, I just want to take the opportunity to say what a pleasure it is to work with this man here, our Director of Human Resources. He is thoughtful, he's considerate, he is um, always thinking about things from multiple perspectives, and he's just a great person to work with. So if I'm going to be doing all the talking, I at least want to make sure to acknowledge what a great person I get to work with. Right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. All right. We'll go to action, or excuse me, discussion item D3, which is the first reading of school board policies, uh, policy 413, harassment and violence, policy 425, staff development, policy 524, electronic technologies, um, acceptable use policy, policy 708, transportation of non public uh, school students, policy 711 video recording on school buses are there any questions comments we've had these policies in our board packet i just want to make sure there's any as we go through the first reading any questions comments anything else regarding those policies mr wilson yeah mr chair i did have one question i was just curious as to why they took the entire paragraph regarding a remedial response out can you tell us which policy we're referring to um, all of them, no. 
It is I think the first one. Policy 413. 413. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kazmercheck. Who was the lead on that? Mr. Cooper. On page 413-3. Are you talking, um, so that was, that was added? No, it's being deleted. Um, I'm just and my, wondering why they took out my, um, such a response. Is it letter E, or, or correct response, means a measure? Is it, Scott, is it the means a measure to stop and correct acts of harassment, et cetera? Well, normally it, the yellow means deletion. It's underlined? No, it's So not. it's an addition? Add? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. So I suspect that was a change from MSBA policy that was incorporated. Okay. Ms. Newmaster. I'm looking at I was looking at notes, um, 425 staff development. And I guess after a year's worth of strategic plan meetings and committees and things like that, um, I was looking for something in here that says even the very beginning of the purpose Support student learning and reflects a strategic plan because I think everything everybody's been working to talks about that and it's not like it's a separate strand I, I know it's all worked in together but it's is it in there somewhere I looked through a couple places <coughs> Chair Mullen, Ms. Paul right um, I welcome the amended, amended uh, inclusion of strategic plan. It's not part of MSBA language, but I do think it reflects the priorities of our district. I welcome, from my That's perspective, kind of the, mm -hmm. it's a great addition. Can I, um, there, there is a, a mention of the strategic plan in uh, Roman numeral three, duties of the staff development committee. Um, that is aligned to the district strategic plan mm -hmm. and the world's best workforce plan. Did you mean that you'd like to see it? But in the beginning when it talks about the purpose, since that's mm -hmm. supposedly our driving mm -hmm. philosophy for everything, it'd be good to put it in there. Mm -hmm. And my other, other comment on it is I was, you know, glad to see actually the reformation, because if you've been around long enough, you see things come back. <coughs> and we used to have the, di the district staff development committee and a building staff development committee and people work their way through it and forms were submitted and maybe it'll be a similar thing <coughs> some sort of a form submitted and your building committee discusses it so I think it's a it's a plan that should allow for more um, discussion at a building level and more input because we used to do I think <coughs> more of that and um, Maybe I've just missed it because I've been out of it for a couple of years, but uh, the plan looked like it, it's going to involve a lot of people, <coughs> which is a good thing. It is a priority for us to um, use staff de development dollars to work on district-wide initiatives, but also to give some of that autonomy to the building level, and there are building level staff development committees, so hopefully that will be... Um, continue to be lived out in the policy and where it may not be in cases, we'll make sure that the policy guides our <coughs> processes. Ms. Beloy? Um, and looking through that, uh, um, the same thing, um, everyth everything is crossed out for um, when the school board would be doing the review. So once a year, everywhere has been crossed out. Is there some kind of time frame that we're looking at are we just trying to leave that open, or are we going to be developing some sort of timeline for when we would be reviewing these? Um, what we what we want to do in a policy is have the policy be the governance piece, and then in terms of those um, processes, that those um, are not necessarily part of the policy language, um, and so those were coupled together, and and that's not really part of how. Um, MSBA drafts policies they really like to have the governance language and then the process pieces are separate from the policy and so this just reflects wanting to align with um, that separation any other questions regarding any of the policies okay with that uh, these policies will be back I believe you're gonna make the minor change to policy 425 or review it and then get us out a, 
uh, an additional copy for the next board meeting. Correct. And they will be back in Miss Bloy. There's one typo. <laughs> Sorry. In the unacceptable uses under the electronic policy. Under policy 524. And unacceptable uses. We just email those to Jody. You, you just, okay. All right. So with that, they'll, you got another comment? Mm -hmm. Master, go ahead. Um, okay. The acceptable use policy and, you know, I've read through it. The only question I had was um, where they won't use it. And I wondered, obviously we'll never use your district Chromebook for anything personal. You will take it home, but it will never be used. You will better get two computers, and that's fine. But um, I wondered where the booster group comes in as, let's say you've got band boosters or something like that that's not a school official group, but you would be promoting it, and you might be on your Chromebook saying, um, you know, we're selling Bearshi bars for band or something like that. When it talks about not promoting sales, Dr. Kashmichek, are you? Um, you know, Mr. Garrison fine. and Ms. Cooper probably uh, need, need to come up to. Marge, are you referring to under <coughs> Roman numeral V, Roman numeral five, um, number two, person use of? I just was thinking of all the. to posting personal contact or personally identifiable information. Employees shall obtain written approval of the content of postings from the building administrator. So the principal will get every notification that every group is going to put out about every fundraiser or that would be booster activities, fundraisers. Is there some application form? I just thought that's going to be a whole lot of approval work for things that really are school related but if you're posting something like that you're going to have to get your building principal's permission could you tell us where you are huh? yeah i'm where at you? uh oh, the paragraph sorry. under point two let's see what page is it it says uh 524 uh dash four hmm. And then there's the, in addition, prior to posting, on a school-related So it's 7-2, right? Yeah, seven, paragraph seven, 7, subparagraph 2, two. Right. 524-4. And I just, you know, and I, I'm thinking to be specific, all of the things at a high school, all the years I was at North Campus, and all the different things that people are promoting and selling and activities and car washes um is that what you're meaning i've always read that in the past to mean broad approval so for example marissa works with the building clerical to set guidelines for what gets posted on our website and they allocate who gets to be, who gets to post at different levels so that just any staff member wouldn't be able to post on the district website but you'd have to go through a process to understand what you were doing and other people would know but it wouldn't mean that every time you were going to make a change you'd have to get approval from uh, from your supervisor your administrator yeah that, that it, I, I've never read it to mean uh, to mean that no let's just said shall approve obtain written approval of the content of the postings from the building administrator and I thought that's a whole new level of application which would be a whole lot of work yeah we've just granted editing rights to people and viewed that as the they can in fact edit the website but we haven't we haven't gone into every single posting that people have done. Mm -hmm. And do you mind if I? Hey. You know, and I think related to this, when this first came in, there was confusion that some people were posting personal garage sale information, and posting something about a fundraiser for an athletic team is very different from posting about I'm going to have a garage sale on Saturday. 
So it was my reading of it, it's in terms of clarifying if it's related to the school, that's fine. You have a general approval for school activities. Yeah, I thought that mm -hmm. might be clear, but it, it seemed like there was some gray area. If you're doing a garage sale and, and a well, hockey skate exchange or something. But it says prior to posting any right. personal contact or personally identifiable information, you must approve written approval. That's if, to me, I read that as my school contact is public information. But if I want to post my personal email, then I have to get permission to use because it says further you have no expectation of privacy. Mm -hmm. So it's really looking at you do not want people posting personal home address, et cetera, um, for staff. That's how I read it. Well, too. and I didn't know if it was just staff mm -hmm. because I guess I've been so involved lately in the ECFE and the Otter PTO, and they have their own web page, and they post all kinds of activities, and they do fundraisers and special things, and you know, not sure, because then we we link to that. So if I want to see what the PTA is doing, the link is on the Otter website. Yeah. But it is their web page. Correct. Yeah. So I just wondered where that kind of stuff fits. Yeah, I think we're talking about the district, just only the district, not anything that would be linked to it that we have no control over, but just those things that we can't control and control that person identify, identifiable information to make sure that privacy information is not being violated via the posting of something on a website. Some of it was like the personal stuff that's out there, and I know PTA will will do things that we don't do from the school office, but we are providing access to that and people would really miss that because that's about the only place they can get some information. Yeah. I don't know. I just wondered where does that whole slice of the pie fit? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Newmaster. Are there any other questions, comments regarding any of the other policies or even that policy? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. With that, we'll move on to our first operational item, operation item E1, which is the action on the American Indian resolution of concurrence. Uh, we heard from Mr. Adams earlier. Uh, I would entertain a motion at this time to, uh, the recommendation, excuse me, is to approve the 2018 American Indian Education Committee's resolution of concurrence. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Chapman. This would require a roll call vote. Yes. <clears throat> Where's my list? Chapman. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Fahey. Aye. Mullen. Aye. Newmaster. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Beloyd. Aye. The motion passes. Um, operational item E2, which is the action on the long-term facility maintenance plan. Um, there's a recommendation to move the approval of a 10-year long-term facility maintenance plan as presented. I know that we had had this at our, our last work study session. Is there a motion to uh, approve the policy? So moved. Approved by, uh, excuse me, a motion by Mr. Chapman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Newmaster. There are any questions regarding the, the policy? Mr. I'll just, add a, I'll just add a couple things. Um, so again, what we what we discussed at the work study meeting included a very detailed list of projects, especially for the next um, the, the next two or three years, and then more uh, placeholder items as we go into the into the future. Um, we, so we talked about that. We talked about the um, LTFM expenditure plan and our LTFM revenue plan. So those are the those are the three pieces that were included in this agenda item and the. Um, the long-term facilities maintenance expenditure and revenue plans will be submitted to the Department of Education in advance of the, the next agenda item that we're going to um, we're going to be reviewing. Um, but this is a necessary step in that process. And as Mr. Mullen stated, we reviewed this at some length and in some depth at our work, recent work study meeting. Any questions, comments? 
with this, this will also, re we have a motion and a second. This will also require a roll call vote. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloit? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, with that, we will go to operational item E3, action on the resolution uh, for the general ob obligation bonds. Dr. Kazmierczak. All right, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. So on, uh, this, again, is related to the previous agenda item. So we, we talked again at our work study meeting about uh, issuing bonds in, in order to uh, fund the, the projects for the next couple of fiscal years. So we're here tonight um, to do that. We have a, an intent resolution that will be um, acted upon this, this evening. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to welcome Shelby McQuay from uh, Ellers uh, Incorporated and also Barbie Doyle from Ellers, our financial advisors. And um, Shelby is going to take the lead on this particular item and, and go through the um, bond pre-sale report. Those of you who are on the board, uh, we went through one of these just a few months ago when we did a refinancing. So, and, and actually, Ms. McQuay was here for that. So, welcome again. It probably seems like deja vu, perhaps. Um, and um, and so then with that, we would be in, in a position to to issue. This is the first step in the process to issue uh, long-term facilities maintenance bonds to uh, accomplish those things that we talked about at our work study meeting with our facilities for the next couple of years. So welcome, Ms. McQuay. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me tonight. I'll just briefly walk through the pre-sale report. And um, that is your informational item for tonight. Your action item is the uh, resolution, which uh, um, binds you to the credit enhancement program with the state and then also updates your your long-term facilities plan with the state that reflects the bond issue that you are about to um, vote on so uh, just very briefly you um, your plan your part of your plan is to issue bonds to pay for some of the projects uh, in your long-term facilities plan so um, 15 million nine hundred seventy thousand dollars in bonds will be issued and that will allow you to pay upfront costs associated with the projects in your 10-year plan. Districts are allowed to um, levy pay-as-you-go revenue, so you can you have those annual maintenance projects, but then you also have some larger projects that you just need more money upfront for, and, and the bonding authority allows you to do that. You're a grandfather district. You've all, always had this authority because of your size from the state, uh, statewide, now, um, many districts around the state have similar authority, but you do have um, broader authority to to go out and um, issue bonds for the for the deferred maintenance pro projects, um, and that's under Statute 123B595. So the bond is for a term of 13 years and 10 months. It will be a callable bond, which means that when you pay principal um, in the years 2025 through 2032, a portion of those um, interest payments will be um, subject to uh, a refunding. So you can call the bond on uh, February 1 of 2026, which will allow you to refund those if the terms are preferable. Um, and you'll be able to refund the maturities in 2027 and later. Um, just a couple of other features that are mentioned in the pre-sale report. I can answer any questions, but I'll try and go through this pretty briefly since you are pretty familiar with these. Your underlying rating is a rating from Standard & Poor's. You have a AA rating, so that's a great rating, and that will um, broaden the market for the investors that are looking to purchase your bonds. Uh, the method and placement of sales. So on the day of sale, um, we at Ellers will facilitate the bond issue through um, an online platform and then you'll award based on the lowest true interest cost. And um, and then that evening at your board meeting, you'll award that sale. We'll work um, with the underwriter to um, who, who is awarded the lowest, or who bids the lowest true interest cost to just um, make sure that you are legal within the terms of the bond issue and get the most amount in your construction fund. So that's what we'll be doing on the day of sale and presenting, presenting that to you. Um, you may receive a premium price. There is one assumed in here. And um, part of that and the way that comes in with the bid will just be restructured um, on the day of sale. We do always review your existing debt and look for refunding opportunities like we did um, at the end of last year. Um, you are already subject um, to continuing disclosure and required to submit reports and you'll have to continue to do so with this bond issue. 
Um, yeah, the last page just lays out your other service providers, your bond attorney who prepared the resolution for you tonight, Bond Trust Services Corporation, as part of the credit enhancement program with the state, you are required to have a paying agent, and Bond Trust Services is that paying agent, and your rating agency is, of course, um, Standard & Poor's. On page four is the timeline uh, after after the pre-sale um, review tonight and the credit credit enhancement resolution is adopted. Um, you'll award sale on March 5th and uh, the closing date which you'll have the money is March 29th. And then I'll just walk through a couple of the schedules. On, um, beginning on page five is what we call the sources and uses and this just outlines the money that will be coming to you and then how you will use that money. So um, most notably here that you haven't seen in past bond issues is the capitalized interest this just means that you are issuing the bonds um, earlier than you are set to levy for that. You're not going to levy for uh, the debt service on these bond payments until pay 19, which is next begins next January, and you will have to make an interest payment. So you'll make that interest payment out of bond proceeds, and that's what capitalized interest is. Um, on the next page, I can just orient you quickly to the um, slew of numbers. This is your debt plan. Uh, and it, on the upper left-hand corner is the facilities maintenance bond for this evening. It also includes the facilities maintenance bond that the district plans in a couple years to complete some of those projects. Uh, the existing commitments are listed there, building bonds, you have some outstanding all facilities bond, and you have some OPEB bonds that will be uh, paid off in fiscal year 2021. The proposed new debt then in the, um, sort of the center right includes this issue, the $15.97 million issue, and then also the, the later $3.34 million issue. And that issue just um, reflects that long-term plan that you just uh, adopted for the revenue and the expenditures for your LTFM. Uh, and then going forward from there, I think the district's plan is to use the pay-as-you-go money to keep up with any deferred maintenance projects that you have. The next page is just a graphical interpretation of that, um, of those lots of numbers on the page. And you can see the red bars represent the existing debt. You have some lease and economic development levies. And then the yellow bars are the general fund facilities maintenance. That's that pay, pay as you go or the annual amount. And then the bond issues for the facilities maintenance bond are included there. The debt service schedule is found on page Eight, we are assuming a true interest cost of one point, or excuse me, 3.19 for the 13 year bond. Um, and then on page nine is just another, um, uh, is the expenditure plan. So this is what builds the, the uh, estimates for the bond issue uh, in 2018 and then again in 20, uh, 2020. So you can see the bond payments there or, um, and then the, co the facilities maintenance costs from the planned plan and the net costs. I can answer any questions you have. I can go into more detail on anything or you can take action on the resolution. <clears throat> I think what we should probably do is get a motion and a, a second and then we can open it up for discussion. So with that, the recommended action is to move the approval of the resolution uh, stating the intent of the school board to issue general obligation bonds to finance projects included in the district's approval 10-year facilities plan. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Ellison. Discussion? This is typically something that we move it through. So appreciate your appreciate your all the information. Um, with that, this will require a roll call vote. Chapman, aye. Ellison, aye. Fahey, aye. Mullen, aye. Newmaster, aye. Wilson, aye. Beloit, aye. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. With that, we'll move to action our operation item E four, which is the action for the reimbursement resolution. Dr. Kazmercheck. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. This is another item that we discussed at our uh, most recent work study meeting. Um, uh, reimbursement resolution is um, it's necessary if we are to, for example, um, purchase land as we consider the growth in the northern part of the school district. Uh, it is likely that we, we do not have the capacity to handle the growth 
So it means we'll likely be building something. We haven't identified what that would be. Um, but if we purchase land now or in the next year or so, we would then be able to reimburse the general fund with future bond proceeds um, at a, at a future bond from a future bond issuance. Um, and so this resolution is required in order for us to do that. And so we, again, we had some discussion about this at our work study meeting. Um, our uh, bond attorney prepared this for us. And um, so it's, it's here tonight for, for board action. With that, we have a recommendation to move the appro uh, approved the resolution establishing procedures for reimbursement of certain expenditures from proceeds of future bond issues and other borrowing presented. Is there a motion? So, Sorry, Ms. Newmaster. Thank you. Is there a second, Mr. Chapman? Second. Uh, is there any discussion? This will also require a roll call. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloit? Aye. Motion passes. With that, we'll move to operational item E5, which is the action uh, on the bid for roofing project at Central Middle School, summer of 2018. Dr. Kazmierczak. And thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. I'd like to welcome Mr. Tom Mazorek, our Director of Finance, to, to cover this agenda item. Welcome, um, Mr. Mazorek. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, before you are the uh, results of the uh, bid opening that we had for the roofing project here at Central uh, Middle School, um, we had three bids with the uh, lowest responsible bidder being Peterson Brothers Roofing and we're recommending that you uh, accept their bid. They will be starting in June um, to be completed by July 29th. Um, and we are not using the bond proceeds that we're talking we talked about earlier we're using existing monies that we okay. um we have from the previous bond sale that was part of the plan so um that will be covered with uh, existing dollars we have a recommendation to move to award the base bid package for the re-roofing at central middle school uh, for the contract amount of 234000 to Peterson Brothers Roofing. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. A motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Beloy. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chapman. I'm just wondering, uh, this, this particular engineering firm, uh, have we used them in the past? Uh, in I believe we have. Are, we, are you talking about roof spec? Yeah. Yeah, they've done our, we work with them to determine our long-term plan on roofs. Okay. So that, yeah, this this is a firm we've worked with in the past. Okay, mm -hmm. very much in the past. It's uh, not a name I'm really mm -hmm. familiar yeah. or used to seeing a whole lot of, so. Yep, they've, con they've done our, um, I can verify how long, but okay. they've done, They've done our um, overall planning, our overall district plan for roofs, and I, I don't know the exact number of years, but certainly since I've been here, we've used them, and that's been about four years. Um, mm -hmm. I can verify. Any other questions, comments? This will require a roll call. Thank you. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Sounds like Central's getting a new roof. Mm -hmm. A portion, anyway. <laughs> bit by part, piece by piece. <laughs> All right. Move to action, I, our operational item E6. Action on the tentative agreement uh, with the school service employees, SEIU, Local 284, paraprofessionals. Dr. Kazmierczak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to welcome Mr. Cooper back to the podium uh, for the next several agenda items, as they are all um, similar in nature but with different <coughs> employee groups thank you um well some most of the things we covered in the closed session uh starting with the paraprofessionals uh just give an overall um percentage that we agree to for this particular group is 6.99 we try to keep it around seven percent <coughs> for each of the groups uh this one's 6.99 so that's made up of uh medical which is seven percent and for the first year four percent for the second year and uh, fully paid single and family uh, dental insurance. Uh, for a salary go, we agreed to a 2% for the first year and two and, two and a quarter percent for the second year for this group. Uh, longevity, we agreed 10% uh, per, per hour 
uh, for longevity, the first year of the contract. And um, the nurse pairs will get $2 extra as a um, differential pay. We've having issues with um, recruitment for that particular group. And so we weren't competitive with the market when it came to salary. So we agreed to a $2 differential for this particular, particular group so that we can be more competitive in the market uh, to attract and hire and retain uh, nurses for um, our programs. So again, that came to a 6.99% uh, overall package for paraprofessionals. And any questions you have? Okay, we've got a recommendation to approve the proposed 2017-2019 agreement with the School Service Employees SEIU Local 284 Paraprofessionals um, by passing the following resolution. I would ask the clerk to please read the resolution. Whereas the parties have reached a tentative agreement on the 2017-19 contract, whereas the School Service Employees SEIU Local 284 Paraprofessionals have ratified the contract, then be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2017 to 2019 agreement and authorizes the chair and clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. We have a resolution before us. Is there a motion to accept the resolution? So moved. A motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Newmaster. Uh, this would require a roll call vote. Chapman? Aye. Allison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Okay. We uh, will move to operational item E7, which is the action of the tentative agreement with the school service employees, SEIU Local 284, for the secretarial and clerical. Okay. Mr. Cooper. Mr. Chair, board, uh, Dr. Kasman Um This particular package is a similar package to the paraprofessional. We have pretty similar uh, issues with both groups. Um, so the percentage came out to be a little bit higher uh, for this group. 7.34 versus 6.99 percent, and that may, that's what makes that up is uh, healthcare. Seven seven percent the first year, four percent uh, second year, same as the uh, paraprofessionals. Fully paid uh, single and family uh, dental insurance. Salaries two percent first year, two percent second year. Uh, longevity is 10 percent across the, the schedule for uh, year two only. So that's the uh, proposal that we agreed to for uh, the support staff, clerical support staff. We have a recommendation to approve the proposed 2017-2019 agreement with the School Service Employees SEIU Local 284 Secretarial and Clerical by passing the following resolution. Would the clerk please re read the resolution? Whereas the parties have reached a tentative agreement on the 2017-19 contract, whereas the School Service Employees SEIU Local 284 Secretarial and Clerical have ratified the contract, then be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2017 through 2019 agreement and authorizes the chair and clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. You've heard a resolution. Is there a motion to accept the resolution? I have a, I have a question. May I ask a question to clarify? Uh, this is a one year or a two year? Uh, this is a two year contract. 2017 2019 two and two okay. you've heard the resolution gotcha. is is there a motion so moved a motion by miss Ellison is there a second 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 by miss Fahey I apologize for forgetting the discussion last time so with that is there any discussion with the resolution Seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloyd? As I'm a member of that union, I abstain. The motion passes. Action or operation item E8, which is the action on the tentative agreement with the Principals Association. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Board, Mr. Uh, Dr. Kasmanchak. Um, the principal overall package came to be a 5.22%, and that's made up of health care with 5% the first year and 2.5% two, two uh, for the second year. 
salary, we agreed to a 2% uh, increase in step five of the high school principal salary schedule and 2.125% across the entire schedule for year two of the principal uh, salary schedule. We agreed to a $500 increase in longevity for year five, 10, and 15, and add a 20-year uh, longevity step at $9,500 for that particular longevity step. Uh, we agreed to increase the HRA to match that of other groups, which is from $1,200 to $2,500 annually. They were one of the lowest that we've had it, uh, as far as uh, representing groups, so we wanted to bring them in on par with the rest of the groups. We also agreed to a professional development stipend of $1,500. That's for uh, professional development as well as uh, technology they can use it, use it for. And a $1,500 merit leadership stipend, uh, that was something that um, didn't have criteria around it. So we wanted to keep that in there and then ask some criteria as far as how they qualify to, to get that. So that's something that we agreed to is develop those criteria for uh, receiving it. Uh, vacation day, we agreed to extend their time. It was, it was before, it was July 31st. And we agreed to give them to August 31st uh, to use that time because it's hard for the principal to get away uh, during the regular school year. And so we wanted to make sure that they didn't lose that vacation time. So we ex extended it. Uh, it was informally extended last year and we just made it, we formalized it this year and the contract agreement for the principals. So again, that uh, total package is 5.22% for that group. We have a recommendation to approve the proposed 2017-2019 agreement with the Principals Association by passing the following resolution. Would the clerk please read the resolution. Whereas the parties have reached a tentative agreement on the 2017-19 contract, whereas the <coughs> Principals Association has ratified the contract then be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2017 through 2019 agreement and authorizes the chair and clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. You've heard the resolution. Is there a motion? Motion by Ms. Newmaster. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beloy. Uh, is there any discussion regarding the resolution? Seeing none. This will require a roll call vote. Chapman? Aye. Allison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloit? Aye. All right, we're getting down there. One more agreement. So action on the tentative agreement with the Administration Association. Okay. Mr. Cooper. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Board, uh, Dr. Kasper Jack. Uh, this, this particular package came in higher than other packages, 9.29%. And the reason it looks that way is because there's a step, there's step increases that we have to incorporate into uh, the uh, administrator. There's two individuals in this group that are stepping for uh, the year of the contract. And so that made the, that pushed the percentage up higher because of that, that reason. So I'll go over to uh, what makes up that percentage. This insurance is 5% for the first year, 2.5% uh, for year two. Uh, longevity will agree, I'm sorry, salary agreed to a 2% increase for, from last year. This particular uh, contract is for one year and we'll be negotiating uh, uh, an extension of that contract at the end of this school year. Uh, they're the only one right now with a one year, with a one year contract. Uh, longevity, uh, five, so five, year five is 2,000, we we'll agree to. Uh, year 10, 3,015, year 4,500, uh, 20 year, uh, $6,200. Uh, we also agreed to a technology and professional development uh, uh, amount of $900 uh, for this group, and they can use that for, again, uh, purchase of a computer or any kind of uh, professional development for personal uh, growth and development. Uh, so that's the um, agreement for the administrators that we agreed to. So we've got a recommendation to approve the proposed 2017-2018 agreement with the Administrators Association by passing the following resolution. The Where, clerk. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Fahey. I got Fahey. this now. Whereas the parties have reached a tentative agreement on the 2017-18 contract, <laughs> whereas the Administrators Association has ratified the contract, then be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2017 through 2018 agreement and authorizes the chair and clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. You've heard the resolution. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Ms. Ellison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Fahey. 
Is there any discussion regarding the resolution? Mr. Wilson. Yeah, Mr. Cooper, during the work session, I don't seem to recall where this proposed settlement places us uh, with our commensurate districts. Do you happen to have that information handy? Administrators versus yeah, where the compare settlement to. compares to the districts that are most like us, you know, close to us. Yeah, it, that's a that's a kind of a different kind of group because it's really not a. Oh, they're a different kind of group. <laughs> And that's really it's really not a, a really good comparison uh, for I think Miles view um, has some positions that came close to how they were structured but uh, there's not many uh, out there in the East uh, Metro that were close to uh, this particular group so it was really hard to kind of generate any external comparisons to well let to me that. rephrase the question if you would sir um, are we competitive we are competitive no doubt any other questions regarding the resolution? This will also require a roll call vote. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Fahey? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. That the motion passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Cooper. Thank you. With the last operational item, uh, E10, which is action on school board policies, policy 405, veterans preference, and policy 610, uh, field trips. I'd like to do those in one fell swoop. Uh, unless there's any objections with that, would we have a motion to uh, adopt those policies? So moved. A motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Chapman. This. Uh, all those in favor of the policy? This doesn't need to be a roll call, correct? No. 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 no all any, those in favor? Any, oh, excuse me. I apologize. Is there any discussion regarding those two items? Mr. Chapman. Just a very, uh, very, very small typographical item that I found um, on the much labored over from what I understand field trips uh, uh, policy. The very first sentence uh, should have an is in there. The general expectation of the school board is that the district will provide free public don't want to hold it up over that <laughs> <laughs> so with the fixing of that is there any more discussion well as a sitting oh sorry mr. Wilson I was getting ready to move on it but <laughs> <laughs> with uh, seeing no discussion all those in favor of adopting those two policies aye aye, aye. aye. oppose the ayes have it the policies adopt so this is the uh, best time of the meeting or one of the best times this is the board forum opens it up for an opportunity for board members to speak about uh, or talk about anything that's going on uh, in the district and their liaison schools or anything that they'd like to bring up is there anything under board forum mr. Wilson well uh, looking through the earlier um, administrative items there is a prominent retirement that's been announced for the conclusion of this academic year and I would like to acknowledge the services of Kathleen Daniels very much uh, appreciated great to work with you wish you all the best in your future endeavors um, yes <laughs> thank you very much for your service Ms. Daniels Ms. Newmaster I'm just going to do a little promo for ECFE I go to their PTO and PTA and they're very active they have their uh, second annual pasta dinner coming up the last Friday in February I believe it's the 23rd and um, last year was fun and there's open gym for kids and it if you've never gone to anything at Normandy Park it's a good thing to go to and it supports a great program and I can't help but say they're growing like Topsy and it's they do a lot with very little space so I listen to all of this building dreaming and and I know that our early childhood program is super strong very enthusiastic and totally tight in their quarters so we need to build them some yurts or something like that <laughs> because yes. they're doing great things mm -hmm. but they need more room and I, I would have to say Otter has bingo this week so and that's pretty amazing too all right thank you anything else under board form miss Faye I just I know that dr. Kazmacek mentioned the um, 
fifth grade Willow takeover of Donatelli's in February. But I'd really like to thank Donatelli's staff, particularly Trish and Steve, for working with those kids. The kids um, write cover letters and resumes, and Lee Anderson at Willow practices with them in terms of doing an interview. They're interviewed for different positions. They work as cooks, as wait staffs, as hosts and hostess, and they do a wonderful job. So thank you very much to Donatelli's for being involved with that for quite some time. And then one more thing, just a highlight. Um, there's going to be a community conversation on February 28th at Boatworks Commons um, based on the book, A Good Time for the Truth, Race in Minnesota. It's collaboration between the city of White Bear and the district. Um, you can sign up through Community Rec online. There's no cost for that. But um, that's something that coming up in February 28th, it would be nice to see a lot of people there for the conversation. So that's it. Ms. Newmaster? I would be remiss not to say, this is I Love to Read Month. As a retired mm -hmm. media specialist, <laughs> there are lots of exciting reading things going on. I know I'm going to get to participate in reading around Lincoln. Um, and there's just so many exciting things at the different schools that that they're really fun and it's a good thing to do in winter or so, any time miss ellison i just wanted to acknowledge that of the 167 teachers that were nominated for minnesota teacher of the year two of them were from the white bear district uh, nick marty from lincoln and angela bianco from matoska were both nominated so kudos to them anything else under board forum with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, I move to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Wilson, and I'll second it. We are adjourned. It is 821.